Setting Up and Twisted for Sugar, who are um, sponsoring us. All right, so let me go ahead and introduce to you Zealot Lopez. She's going to be talking to us about the misconception of y el novio, the common Latinx question that happens at family parties, any family gathering. Um, and I think she's gonna sprinkle in also the y la novia here and there. So Zealot Lopez is a dually licensed psychotherapist, licensed cosmetologist, and entrepreneurial coach, helping humans to rebuild their spirit. Guided by her intuition, clinical training, life experience, and some luck, she helps individuals and families lead a happier life. Aside from providing therapy to better the lives of her clients, she enjoys coaching entrepreneurs and women of color who are looking to increase their emotional intelligence. She is also a keynote speaker, passionate about educating individuals of the, on the importance of mental health and has spoken at many universities, nonprofits, and various corporations in Los Angeles. Most recently, she has been featured as a speaker on Univision, the Therapy Reimagined Conference, the STEM Conference of Los Angeles, and the Los, Ange Los Angeles Philharmonic. Additionally, Zialat has had a vast ex amount of experience working with Latinx individuals over the years, working in private practice in Sherman Oaks and previously with an agency contracted by the Department of Mental Health in the San Fernando Valley. She, who trained under the Latino Family Program at Phillips Graduate Institute, has a well-developed understanding of how to work with Latinx individuals in therapy to effectively elicit wellness for the client. Thank you so much for being here, Z. How are you? Oh, I, and her nickname is Z, but her full name is Zialot Lopez. Yes, thank you, <laughs> Yes, of course. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and just get started. Um, Z, I think what many of us wanna know is, or maybe I, I don't know, is how does the enmeshment or collectivistic nature of our culture affect this topic? As Latinxers, we, we know that we come from a very collectivistic um, nature in our households, in our community, in our families, historically all around. Everything is, is para la familia, everything that we do. So how, how is this topic um, uh, affected by that? Yeah, it, it's super interrelated and just being very family strength based in my practice as a psychotherapist, I can say that I hear it all the time with my patients, all the time. I think humorously what comes to mind is when I would visit my abuelita, she would always tell me, you know, I was uh, 20, 22, 23 and the years went by, right? And she's like, mija, ¿pa qué estudias tanto? Tienes que estar casada. ¿Qué te pasa? No tienes hijos. Ya estás vieja. I was 25. Now I'm in my 30s. And um, that's all she knew. So she was putting that onto me. That's the cultura. That was the traditions in the family. And it was so enmeshed. At one point or another, I really had to take a look at myself and say, how much is my family and how much is me? And I think that's the real answer there of providing a safe space to others, whether it be in therapy, you know, coaching, whether it be in workshops or just friends saying, hey, where do you begin and where do they stop? Mm, that's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I guess how long did it take you personally to assess this, analyze this and go through this process? Yeah, it's been a lot of work. I'm very transparent. So I'm very big on it. I'm going to tell you to go eat the tacos. I have to try them first. So I'm very transparent that I go to therapy every week for the past five years. I've been doing the work. How can I come correct into the room and be there and hold space for these women and men if I'm not doing the work myself? And it's taken a lot of back and forth, even with my own family members, being Latina, being educated, being single, handling my shh and paying my bills for them to be like, okay, she's got this. She may have something there. I, um, last year I went on a trip with my mother and it was very telling, you know, um, we had a great time. We went to Miami, we were on the tour bus and she goes, mija, te tengo que decir algo. And I'm like, oh, she didn't like the food. Que me va a reclamar? You know, I'm all getting ready. And she says, your ovaries have dust. Tus ovarios tienen polvo. Te tienes que casar. Oh and the goodness. entire bus is quiet and they're just looking at me. And this dude in the back is like, ma'am, I will take care of her dust. I got you. And there I'm humiliated. But from that, I took it to therapy. And I'm like, this is what happened to me. And then I really worked on it. And I had to own it and say, this is my mother's perspective. This is her life. This is her story. But this is not mine. And be in it and be okay with it. 
And transparently, I, I even have family members here today that are still struggling with the idea that being female is okay. Being chingona is okay in my culture. For a long time, I felt shame. I would dim my light because it was too bright for others. And I've been working through that little by little. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's so funny too. Um, I you, can't make it up. This is real. No, I should do stand up. <laughs> yes. Probably. Real situation. Test it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you're already a cosmetologist, now a comedian. That's right. <laughs> Add to the layers. <laughs> In case therapy doesn't work out. <laughs> it's working for you. It, that's right, it is. So, Z, is there a gender difference with this topic? I think there's a difference. However, I think there's different layers to it. And I'm also going to throw in there the added layer of who it is we choose to love, who it is that we want to love. So there's also the LGBT that there's this assumption that if somebody's, you know, higher in their age and in their education and their love life, that automatically it has to be the opposite gender. Not necessarily. I have so many wonderful professionals in my practice that they happen to love the same gender. And then you get this family that's like, ¿Y el anillo para cuándo? but maybe that's not what they want. Maybe it is. Maybe they want children. Maybe they don't. So there's all these assumptions. So because of these assumptions, I can only help but wonder that they're afraid of something. So what is it that they're afraid of? You know, for the longest time, I was resentful and I was angry. Estaba enojada. And I was like, ay, ¿qué les pasa? ¿Por qué no me entienden? But then I realized I shouldn't be angry. I should be welcoming and open and curious. So this is what I started to do. When I started to do real inner work with my own therapist, I started asking the right questions. So when I would get the whole like, mija, you know, your ovarios tienen polvo, I'd be like, well, mom, what are you feeling right now? Are you feeling that I won't have a legacy for you? Is it that I won't take you to Target with my kids one day? Like, ¿cuál es la preocupación aquí? Like, I got you, you know? Like, we have many petty day. And then I realized one day she broke down and she's like, no, mija, I just want you to be okay. At the end of the day, your ovaries have dust is a secret message of I love you, I honor you, and I want you to be okay. Wow. Yeah. That's really powerful. It took me a while to hear that, though. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of, of that gender difference, how, how would messages like that, or I guess what I really want to ask is, what are some things that males or our LGBTQ community here it's not y la novia, y el anillo, or maybe it is, but what are some other common sayings that they would hear? From family members or la cultura? Yeah, yeah, from society. I think, I think this, I think that the universe and people alone are mirrors. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the universe, the world, is like this disco ball, right? And as it circles around, there's a whole bunch of mirrors and you have reflections. And I think that every single person that I meet, um, it's also a part of me and I am a part of them. They are reflections. They say that what bothers us, irritates us, or nos enoja de otros is really about ourselves. So what I'm trying to say here is whenever I hear some comments from other people towards family members about, ah, you know, I tener un bebé, ya se casaron, and then they just wait, but they pass it for us, right? It's, it's a reflection of themselves. Are they afraid the family won't be passed on? Are they afraid that the family heirlooms, la cobija del bebé, or the last name? I think that was a big one for me. And one thing that I'll say is, currently I have an MS behind my name, mm -hmm. but I also have a miss in front of my name. Mm -hmm. And I happen to be one of three daughters. I traditionally won't be able to pass on my last name, but it's a choice. So in regards to the question, I'd say everybody hears something different, but it's what we choose to do with it that really matters. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And I'll just self-disclose that on an opposite note, um, my fiance and I are getting married in October, but we're choosing to, because I, I can't get rid of my last name. Like, I love it so much. And then so, B's, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm, I am adding his, but he's adding mine as well. Oh. So we're, I guess it's modern. the modern way, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that could also be a response. It has to be, though, between the couple, what they are ultimately deciding. Um, on an individual basis. I stated my opinion, the other person stated their opinion, and we, we made a decision. We haven't even discussed it with our family members though, well, more so our parents, but we also come from a much more open-minded um, household because we don't have, all, all of my members specifically are in um, Mexico, and there are none left in Guatemala for us, so I feel like individuals who have more family members get more opinions, <laughs> more things get passed down. The cheese mess also go around a lot more. So I'm privileged in that sense. 
Yeah, and I'm 100% with you, and something that I've been practicing that helps me hold my own self accountable is this. Yes, she smangles around in the family, but then I have to look at myself like, okay, Z, hold on. How much do you participate in the chisme? And little by little, I have a mantra, and the mantra is all I have to do today is drink my water and mind my business. That's it. Yeah. And if I can do that, then I can come correct to others. It starts with me. That's right. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So as a mental health professional, what have you noticed to be the mental health effects of people who are often told, y la novia, y el novio? Yeah, there's this added pressure and layer, and I, what I can speak to mostly is just the experience I have between seeing such amazing, wonderful, badass women in my practice. Like, they're just rocking it in every single way. And they come to me, and then they share in vulnerability, and they're just crying, and they say, I just haven't been able to have a baby. I, I have everything going for me in my life. I just, I can't find the one. Even men that tell me, like, I'm... I want to be wanted for me and not what I bring to the table as far as materialistic or money. So I think what really comes up is the expectations of others versus ourselves. After a while, we start hearing the inner voice of others come up over and over and over, and we have to reframe those thoughts. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. So as a community, how can we um, combat this belief about single people in our culture? That's a great one. Um, there's this shirt I see very often. It says, single and fabulous. And I know you guys have seen it. I know you guys have seen it in LA. And I think it takes a very strong person to be okay with that. For a while, even in like my 30s now, when people would ask like, well, what box is it? They place us into this box and it bothers me because then not only do you have the age bracket, but then you have the like single, divorced, like what are you? And I also have to like make my own little box, right? Like building an empire, check. You know, I really have to just rearrange and let people know there's other options. Yeah, and yeah. that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah, and another thing that is coming to my mind is that in our culture, we are often, because going back to the first question, we are such a collectivistic um, culture that we consider others before we consider ourselves. So um, one of the things that we have to teach is that it's okay to prioritize yourself going back. It's okay to be a little selfish, especially about your life, very much selfish, because in the end, you're gonna have yourself. You know, you have to be happy with the decisions. Uh, another thing that comes up is that people are, you know, thrown into blind dates because of that pressure, because there's expectations that you have to be with someone in order to be happy. Being by yourself will be too lonely, and that's another fear that our families have, that we're not okay with ourselves, but that's the household that, that's everything that they've known. They've known to be in, you know. In, Collectivism. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. in the community. When I go to Mexico, everyone lives very close. Everyone's always with each other on weekends, and that's beautiful, that's beautiful. We don't have that here though, so we're okay with being alone. I don't like too many people. I, I prefer being by myself. I'm an introvert. It's too people-ish outside. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah so, so that, that's uh, more of the historical pressure where that, that this topic also stems from. Yeah. Well, Z, those are all the questions that I had for you. Thank you so much for answering them, but I know that this was a very hot topic, so I want to go ahead and throw the mic out into the community, not literally. Um, anything else you wanted to add before I do that? Yeah, I think you hit a great um, point earlier and just like the I before the we. I think, you know, that's one of the main points in my practice that I work with. It's single young professionals where everything's just popping for them except just that part of their life. And if they're okay with that, be in that space with them. And if they're not, help them find the better way. I f I'll share this transparently that I had to make a very big decision last year in my private practice to no longer see children. I'm great with kids. We rock. We good. But I don't see kids anymore because I personally believe that my true work is with the parents. If there's better human beings that get into a, unit, uh, um, a unified relationship with compassion and love, that choose to have children and raise them, then we'll have a better community. We will have a better generation. But until then, I see no point me personally working with children. And if we don't have the I before the we, there's no healthy marriage there. There's no healthy commitment. So I'm really big on that, knowing who you are before you engage in that long-term commitment. That's so true. On a personal note also, um, because I feel like professionally, I got that. I got those boundaries. But I just started catching myself with one 
one or two. Oh my gosh, I even posted this. You can even hear it in my post. I'm like replaying it and I'll share it. So I just caught myself uh, telling my friends, you know, like, hey, do you want to, you know, date someone? I got people for you. You know, I've made a lot of new friends. And I what's up, like, Cupid? <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been like trying. And you know, like, oh, what? One of my friends, she's religious, and so she says, like, I feel like, you know, when God. Um, God has a plan for me and that person will come and I don't want to force it and I respect that answer this is my very very best friend another person um, they they're more like hey yeah bring them on but then when I start giving the you know answering their checkbox they're like oh actually no but I'm catching myself doing this like pushing people towards one another and I've had to work really 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 hard to not to just pause myself when I get that thought I'm like filter it Adri just filter it like don't do it this is what the ancestors want yes, <laughs> so yes I would I encourage everyone to listen to one another when if if you're doing that you know if you're doing anything pushy and it comes from love obviously but ultimately the message is historical and we want to break these cycles this is where it starts awareness yeah and just so. verbal language like my absolute favorite that I always get is like why are you single well, because I am. That's it. Until I'm not. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I proposed to my bridesmaids, I, I proposed in a big box because I had on the flaps pictures of us and inside was a huge balloon. So when they opened it, it popped out and it said, will you be my bridesmaid? So, but I didn't tell them that it was going to be a proposal box. I told them there was a little man inside. And again, that was me, you know, telling them. I was like, there's a little man in there. I only said that to my single people, <laughs> but to the ones that were taken, obviously I have that strict boundary. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, we have to be, um, be cautious of that, uh, of those behaviors, of those languages, because they, um, we don't know how they're impacting them. Obviously when I realized this, maybe not obviously, but I did going back to my last topic. So for those of you listening, um, because there's many of us here. Um, the topic that I did with Yanita Benya, we spoke about going back and correcting our experiences. And that's what I'm working on, always. I take two steps forward, two steps back, but then I take 10 steps forwards when, when I recorrect my experience. And I ask like, I said this, how did that impact you? I, I was you know, a little bit brainless and I didn't realize that I was doing that, but I wanna know now, I wanna hear you. And we talk about it. And, and I feel like healing happens that way more so and a lot quicker. Not that we want it quicker, but it just from my personal observation. Absolutely, and then not only that, I see it also from the perspe the professional perspective, right? So my favorite is uh, when I get a couple that comes in, right? Or I get a mama that's having a difficult time at home with the kids, and she looks at me and she says, I say, no. And then, you know, she'll look at me again. And she goes, ¿Estás casada? And then she'll look at my hand and I'll be like, no. <laughs> and she goes, oh, pues, ¿cómo me va a ayudar? How are you going to help me? And I say, perfect. And I'll ask her, I'll say, you know, I have a gynecologist, and his name is Michael. He's a man. He doesn't have the same parts and equipment as I do, but he's very professional, and he knows exactly what he's doing, and I go to him every single year. And that's it. That's the conversation. It stops it right there. So I use a little bit of humor very serious and then she gets it and she's like oh no pues si sí, pues sí. and that's it yeah. that's it like we're good for a year now right and it's re-educating people but not being so like offended or like i don't i don't hide it anymore like years ago i used to be like oh no what am i gonna do if a couple comes to me like we're good it's thriving yeah, yeah it's just honesty it's either we vibe or we don't that's right yeah. that's right thank you so much z <laughs> so go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question for either one of us okay All right, so Kim in the audience has a question. Go ahead and I guess my question is, is, I know that earlier you had mentioned that you um, went on a trip with your mom to Miami and kind of like, you know, um, trying to be open on being more understanding and like um, educating and less kind of reactive because I, I think for me is like how do you balance that because like I feel like I'm working already at work and then to have to do that at home as well like it's just it's so exhausting and like yes I I'm the same way I feel like 
I want to lead by example to everyone around me, my friends, my family, um, just anybody, my clients. I work a lot with um, young teens, children, um, some young adult, but I, I just feel like if I can be a good example, then I, you know, it'll make a huge difference in those around me. But I guess, again, my question is, is like, how do you, how do you implement your self care with that? Because I know that I've mentioned things, you know, in and of, uh, okay way to my, to, to my family members, like my dia, my mom. And, but I still get that, like that constant, like push of their beliefs and their stories. And, and so I guess, that's my question. Yeah, um, I had to take a really deep look at myself a couple years back and I asked myself, Z, do you really need these red bottoms or do you need an extra therapy session here and there to sprinkle it in after, you know, conversation con tu tia and your mom and everybody else? And I really had to get a list of priorities. And when it came down to it, I had so much that I had to just work through. That was one, knowing what my priorities are. It wasn't a new dress, it wasn't red bottoms, it wasn't like my swag bag, it was my mental health. Because I think that if we are able to manage our emotions, we manage our money better. We manage our businesses, we manage our relationships better. And in regards to just taking in what family says, I think that after a while, I had this little secret power and I'm tiny and small and I can't even reach like the top products at the store, but I got it on like secret messages. So now when people come at me sideways or they're like, rah, 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 or you know, te tienes que casar, no tienes hijos. I hear we love you, we honor you, and we just know that you're such a badass woman that we just want everything for you. That's what I hear now. I literally just have to hear like, um, no cocinaste, like, ay mija, you know, you need to have time. Like, that's what I hear now. <laughs> so I just try and hear the secret message. It's not me, you know, haciéndome la, you know, la que no oye. It's more of me just choosing to reframe for them when they don't know how to do it. And yes, it's a lot of work, but I want to do it. I want to have a better relationship with my mother. I want to have a better relationship with my father and my sisters. Because down the line, if I don't clear that, that um, transmission, that uh, pattern will transpire onto my children. And I don't want that. So that's my answer to it. It's worth it. So how did you deal with someone, and I know that you said you're only consulting with adults, but have you ever had the experience where a mother does not allow their teenage daughters to date because they have to become this professionals before they can start dating? Absolutely. So when I worked for the Department of Mental Health at an agency, um, I had a lot of teenage girls. And I think that where I really had to start first is doing the work with the initial patient, right? Like who I was seeing and then bringing in the family because I truly do believe that within every single person is una familia. If I don't see that, I'm ignoring all the other parts. So I would really ask, what are the unmet needs here? If there's a parent and their needs in their entire lifetime have not been met, they're gonna put that onto the child. So I'm not hearing a daughter that's just, you know, not listening to discipline or she's just not doing it or está rebelde. I'm hearing a mother that wanted so much more even for herself and wanted so many more beautiful opportunities that she's putting it onto her own child and really just finding that balance in between what is okay with you daughter and what works for you mother. So I was really big on family therapy. I will push it to the core. Yeah. And what I'm getting is that it comes from the same place, from a loving, caring person. Absolutely. Maybe I'm just in this little bubble, but I truly do believe that the world has much more better, good energy and great people than it does not. I am one of those people I will go to Starbucks and leave my purse and tell the vecina, can you watch this real quick? I'm going to go to the restroom. Time and time again, the world proves me right. If I believe that the world is much better than not, the world will give me that. It is a reflection of my thoughts and of my emotions. Thank you so much. So it's sprinkling and hopefully it doesn't get heavier. <laughs> Rain is a good sign, even on weddings. <laughs> God is like, yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. Any other questions in the audience before we wrap up this topic? Let Wow, okay, wait. Your name? Uh, my name is Ruben. Ruben in the audience has a question. 
Uh, we've been focusing on family. What about social media that's been bombarding people with like false realities of happy couples and filters and how do you distinguish the two? Yeah, and, and the Facetune, I'm on it. I love Facetune. <laughs> uh, I think that's a great question. Well, I love social media and I think that people can use it, either use it to their advantage and to have resources or they can use it to lie to themselves. I think that social media where we see all these like Insta couples or that we see all these like quote unquote perfect lives, they're not. We always have to remind ourselves that we are not in competition with others, we are in competition with ourselves. So in regards to relationship, single, not single, it's a situationship, I think the most important thing is having a relationship with self. Am I what I'm about to post? What is my intention behind it? Am I trying to motivate others? Am I trying to inspire? Am I trying to provide others with a resource? And if not, why am I doing this? Really just asking the key questions here. Who do I want to come as? My, my purpose in life is to die much more healed than wounded. And my mission in my work, in my steps, in every single thing that I do in my life right now is to provide the same opportunity to others to have more healing than woundedness before they die. And I check my post. I'm human, I have error, I'm imperfect, but that's the goal, the intention behind it. So just asking yourself key questions, why am I doing this? Is it necessary, right? Is it kind? More of like in the novio kind of thing, but yeah. Yeah, like in the novio kind of way, like should we post if we're in a relationship or not? Uh, no, how? people post these but um, I'm sure you get clients in there who are like oh I see these pictures and that's what I'm told to be or this is what like I grew up with my my parents being married for God knows how many years and reflecting what am I doing in my life at my age what was my dad doing but I, I'm not really in social media but the reflection of how society tells you to be uh, it's not that the app but it's other people telling you what you should be and that's, I think that's, it's kind of hard to, you know, separate the two when you're hearing it from multiple people and what's okay, what's not okay. Absolutely, and I think on top of that, the other is not necessarily what we're seeing, but what we're hearing too. I'll share transparently that my parents have been married for 36 years and they're still married, todavía se agarran bien rico, you know, and <laughs> like, it's great. Um, but for the longest, I lived, in, I lived in La La Land, and I was like, oh, this is what I'm aspiring to, like, this is what I want, I want my mom and my dad. No, that's wrong, because that's them. That's not my lane. I'm not, I'm creating my own life. And I think that's the same mentality that we either follow somebody else's path, or we are our own leader. We definitely design and create our own life. We manifest it. So in regards to all these people that are posting their couples, go for it. That's great. But really ask yourself, is it for me? And every single thing that you do in your life, is it for me? And if your inner voice, your spirit, your soul screams at you, no, don't do it. All right, thank you everybody so much for participating and being here with us. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up, but let's give it, let's give a round of applause to Yanira Peña and Zila Lopez. Thank you so much.